Hey guys, Brent Abernathy. Welcome to the Family First Life Gulf Coast team training call on Monday afternoon. Hope everybody's having a great day so far and got your dial day started off right. I have got a super special guest uh, with us today, uh, Mr. Matt Smith, head of Family First Life Northwest. And um, I'm going to pretty much turn it over to Matt and let him rip with some stuff. But before I do that, uh, bro, I just want to tell you thank you. Um, you have been a good business partner of mine for uh, really, I guess we've known each other for a better part of probably 10 years now. And uh, uh, for a lot of people who are maybe new to Family First Life and uh, just coming on board, uh, they don't know necessarily what you did and how important you were for this company um, early on, especially because you went out and you raised the bar. You set that bar high from the sales perspective and, and helping a ton of families out with insurance every year, you know, helping four, five, 600 families out every single year. And I can 100% say with confidence that Family First Life wouldn't be where we are today uh, without Matt Smith and what you, you did those first few years, especially in the field and um, continue to grow a big agency, obviously an integrity partner. And um, I just wanted you to know from, from me, man, that, uh, it's noticed and it's appreciated. And uh, obviously I appreciate our friendship too. So Matt's the best sales trainer we've got, best sales trainer I've ever heard. Um, so I would have your pen and paper ready and uh, I'm just going to kind of let you rip, man. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you. And, you know, you've been uh, a tremendous leader for all of FFL for many years as well as it's been here from the beginning. And um, I feel the same about you. So I appreciate being on your team call here and, and uh, hopefully giving you guys some things uh, that you can think about and take away and implement into your business. Uh, because right now, you know, it almost feels like the start of the year after a, the annual convention. You know what I mean? There's like a new level of focus, a new level of energy. But the one thing that's interesting about um, as time goes on and we get less emotional about all the decisions that we're making is simply of what type of action points and plans are you taking away from that annual convention that now is implemented into your business and really helping you grow and, and execute at the, the highest level. So, so a couple of things that I, you know, I can dive into that I talked about briefly on, on stage at the convention was, you know, the five things that you can certainly control in this business is, you know, your, your attitude, your activity, it's certainly going to be a lot of a lot of things like your your effort. Um, you know, there's there's things in regards to the progress that you need to make. But at the end of the day, there's certain areas of the business that you can focus on. And if we're going to simply talk about sales and really creating creating some income for you, you it has to start with you having some massive reasons in business. So I'm always a proponent, and Sean does a very good job of this as well as setting goals that should scare you. You know, because um, then you can start to reverse engineer your activity based off the the goals you set. Now, the the problem with a lot, with uh, long term goals, Brent, is you know we set an annual goal, but then we lose focus on our daily activity and what really matters on the steps going towards those goals. Because at the end of the day, Brent, you know. Uh, with your you know professional career in baseball and your your great career in business that you've had, it's more about laying the bricks every single day, and then all of a sudden you have a you know a house built that's built on a sturdy foundation that you can really thrive in. But most people don't end up laying those consistent bricks every day, and then they get lost in the shuffle, and then their goals start to overwhelm them, and then they give up. You know, so I think. Daily discipline is going to set you free 100% of the time in this business. Unfortunately, a lot of people get in a self-employed environment. If, if any of you right now are you know, making that transition from a W-2 job to a self-employed individual, the good news is this is literally the highest profession, paying profession in the world, meaning sales is, but it also can be the lowest paying profession in the world. It really depends on your ability to, to execute you know, uh, on the, the highest level, which really your, your attitude, activity, your strategy, your execution, and your ability to change are the five things that we can talk about throughout this, this call. But it starts with, you know, number one, when you're new, if you need help 
ask for it. A lot of people, I, I have a warm market individual that is a good friend of mine. And I had a conversation with him yesterday and he's like, I have a lot of pride and I just don't, I, I want to figure out myself. I, I don't want to be the person that asks for help. I said, listen, that's what we're here for. That's what you want out of, out of this. And there, when we have a vested interest in the individuals that join our team, of course, we want to help them. Of course, we want to see them grow. So if you're someone that's not like the basic fundamentals of this brand, someone that's not getting on live dials on the team, someone that's not getting to work spots and offices across the country, someone that is not calling their upline or their manager in the home, especially those first, you know, 25, 30 appointments. Once that happens, you probably will not need to call your manager hardly at all. But those are areas that you can't skip early. And if you, if you make those small, it's everything's small adjustments in this business. When you make the small adjustments, It reaps large results because if you capture two more sales by calling your manager, that could be $4,200 maybe in your bank account or whatever. And it could be an area where you can literally start to invest more in your business. So you just don't know what, by you changing your behavior, how much that will help your your business out eventually here. The, The other thing too is when you start out early, you know, a lot of times we start with a very small mindset, Brent, we're, we're just trying to figure out how to pay our bills and we, we understand that. But at the other side of the coin is the more aggressive that you get in regards to expanding your business, the better off you're going to, you know, thank your future self. So the, one of my biggest regrets, and I've said this several times, is not, you know, sales came fairly easy to me. Uh, I still had to work hard to go capture those sales, but I focused on the, you know, instant gratification portion of this business instead of actually owning and operating and building a business. Because the difference is, is now we actually have the, have windows that we can see through. And here's what I mean by that is now we have this integrity effect here for anyone and everyone that wants to build an opportunity to own and operate and be acquired with their own agency. Generally speaking, the things that they look for is you're running a million dollars a month of issue paid volume, you know, probably a team of writers, 150 people or so. But if you can, if you know those things up front, you can start to operate in a different way to really help you help you out tremendously. So the, the key component is before we were sitting in a room with no windows, Brent, and we didn't know it. So when we first started, we didn't know that we could, would ever have the opportunity to be partners we never knew that you know this was going to be available to us. But now for everybody here right now, you have windows to see your future. And my point to this is, is how would you operate differently, Brent, for each and every one of the agents on this call? How would you operate your business differently if you knew you had a winning lottery ticket in front of you and you don't know the date that you were going to scratch it necessarily? but it had the winning number. So now that you know there's a formula that can produce a winning lottery ticket, now your job is to try to get to that level that much quicker. And one of the biggest scenarios is, are you in a hurry? You know, do you have that type of urgency? Because the window of opportunity, I don't know how long will be. They, you know, Integrity has mentioned that they want to continue to partner and build and grow the business on massive levels that we can't imagine. But also, um, if I'm sitting back in and I'm trying to build my agency, I'm going to have a certain urgency because as much as I want to believe that, I also want to believe that there's only so many, so much opportunity for that to happen. But that's like the thousand, 10,000 foot view of this business, Brent. To kind of get back to the basics and everything that what matters to most people, you know, on on the Zoom call here is becoming profitable on your own pen. So without that, there is no belief. You'll never really build it. You know, I mean, that's one of the, the biggest objection for everybody on this call that I see time and time again, Brent, is what's the reason why you don't want to share the opportunity? I want to see it work for myself before I start to offer it to others. And, and hey, there are certain things that we've told people like, listen, what if you're not very good and your freaking friend is very good? Are you making financial decisions for them? I get that. I understand that. But I also know that people get, you know, 
They want to be proud of their accomplishments before they offer and get involved. My point is the more that we care less about what other people think and the more that we, you know, share this opportunity with as many people as possible, the more benefit that you're going to receive at the end of the day. So if you're a personal, uh, if, if we're talking about personal production off the bat, your number one rule for personal production is to create a lead problem for yourself. What do I mean by create a lead problem for yourself? Get so many leads that it eliminates the choice for you to have to work. Right now, the biggest problem, Brent, is you have choices and your calendar is not full. If you look at the amount of time that we all waste throughout the day, it would make you sick. So if you literally, and this goes for Brent, myself, and anybody on this call, if we literally went through and said, okay, I'm going to write down every single thing I did today, how many times I got on my phone, got on social media, not necessarily for work purposes, how many times, how many conversations I had, how long are these conversations? Are they too long? That's one of the things as you start to scale and get better at this business is you should know the, the, the rule of five minutes. And what I mean by the rule of five minutes is, generally speaking, if you're talking to a partner, agent, et cetera, for more than five minutes on the phone, it does them no good. It does you disservice, does them a disservice. There's nothing more to talk about. You, you'd be surprised how much information that you can get out on the phone with somebody in five minutes. If you're really trying to understand how to scale this business, oh, I don't have time. I don't really, I feel like I don't have time because I'm running business, I'm doing this. Talk to people for five minutes. If you talk to people for five minutes, you start to understand that your time is valuable. They'll start to operate the same way. The whole business will explode. And, and then you go from there. So like I said, if, if you take the ability to choose to not work, one of the great things that I did like about you know, when I was in the field full time was because I created a lead problem for myself where I spent money, which required me to work. I would set my calendar up and I make my dials and it's not like I wasn't going to show up to the appointments. Right. I, I gave myself no choice. Too many of us give ourselves choices because they're like, well, I'm not going to buy a second set of leads this week, or I'm not going to buy any leads this week because I kind of have enough. I'm going to process all my old leads. Let me tell you, that doesn't work. You have to re-up every single week in, in regards to getting in front of people because you don't have a money problem. You have a people problem. The more people that you see, the money follows. The difference is we don't create that environment where we can really go to the next level and eliminate the choices because I know one thing, that's why I say Choices are so big, Brent, because if you create overhead, not silly and stupid and dumb overhead that doesn't help you, but if you create overhead, get an office, get good staff, buy leads. If you have that type of pressure, then all of a sudden you go to work. And all of a sudden when other people are relying on you, then it's a different ball game. And what's crazy about it is we always talk about our why. Like, hey, you know, in most people's wise, it's going to be different for everybody. I get that. But a lot of our wives are like for their family, for their kids, et cetera. What's interesting about when the rubber meets the road is people actually, this is what I've seen. People actually don't really change much of anything for their family, for their why. It's more about whether they have the actual desire in this business to get to a new level or get what they want out of it, right? Like, they might say they're, you know, they're doing it for this, but the real reason is they want to buy a new car, a new house. I don't know. You know, they, maybe that's what gives them desire. Maybe success on a different level gives them desire. But if you don't have desire, it doesn't matter about your why. So you got to ask yourself these questions and think, you know, where is my desire to change? Where, where can I get better? Because a lot of this business, um, is just that. I mean, we talked, you know, attitude, activity, we're kind of touching on those things right now. We talk about strategy with creating a lead strategy and an actual business model with your manager that wants to help you grow your agency. You got to have a strategy in business. If you don't have a strategy, it's time to start talking about your strategy with the people that, I mean, you can talk to anybody and everybody at FFL and they're going to help you, but you got to start with the people that have a vested interest in you doing well. The people that actually, you know, if you, they help you, you grow, there's a, there's a financial gain there. I don't, you know, I think it's great to go all the way around, but I'm going to start with who has the financial interest in me because I feel like they're going to give me the most honest advice. 
A lot of times when we go outside of certain things, we'll get some advice. We won't get all the advice. So start with your team is what, what I'd always, rec- always recommend. So have a strategy. And then we start to talk about executing on the highest levels. So executing on the highest levels is literally like just understanding how to close different clients, under, understanding secondary sales, understanding how to start to reallocate funds and move money on you know, fixed index annuities. I mean, 85% of the Hall of Fame producers write advanced markets, but only 7% of the company, Brent, writes advanced markets. So what does the Hall of Fame producer know that you don't? It probably has something to do with advanced markets. So that's the reason why it's important for you to study on non-income producing hours. It's important for you to get on, you know, Sean Ruggiero's advanced market sales stuff and de- delve deep into that and learning how to speak to clients. You know, Tom Hagna always talks about this as a words business. I believe it's a words business, not only on the retirement side, it's a word business on the, on the life side too. And Brent, you've always done a great job of bringing an emotion into your sales. I know you have because you lead, lead the whole company in, in the death certificate. I'm just sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, but, but literally, you know, it's like, if you don't know how to execute on these, these levels, like you need five things in every single house. They're going to buy you, sell so sales 101. They're going to buy you based off liking and trusting you. They're going to buy the company and you know, they're going to buy the company, meaning family first life and the insurance carriage. So you have to build value on why you're independent. You, you've got all these options for, you know, A-rated, multiple A-rated insurance companies get the best price for their specific scenario. So you got to understand that we deal with A-rated companies that pay you a death claim, which is the most important thing. So you have to build value in that. So that's the second thing. The third thing is you have to identify the problem and give the right solution. If you don't identify the right problem, they may have, they may have filled out a form for debt reduction, but 52% of people buy life insurance based off of income replacement. So 52% of people buy life insurance based off of income replacement. Anytime you have a husband, wife, spouse, partner scenario, then that could be the hot button. They could fill it out for, I want a half a million dollars online for life insurance. But then you go in and you talk about the income and that's the hot button. So you identify the problem and then you give the right solution. Right solution is going to be simplified issue products that are, you know, issuing two to three days and you getting paid quickly because it's about making money fast in this business. It's not about, you know, the most profit on certain things. It's more about how can I make money quickly? You know, and that's why we, that's part of the reason why we do simplified issue, but it's also the best product because these people are looking for non-medical options. And then we get into the fourth thing is, is logical. It has to make logical sense. And that's why we use financial inventory. And then the final thing is emotion because people buy based off emotion backed by the logic. So what happens is, is when we drive up the emotion in the house and we create urgency, because without emotion, you don't have the urgency in the sale. And then you get, I need to think about it, Brent. I'll get back to you. Hey, when we buy Brent, I, you're my guy, Brent, when we buy, you know what I mean? So if you don't create the urgency, then they don't have to check the logic to buy. So it, then what happens is you have to have all five of those things. So literally you got to go backwards from emotion to logical sense, to identifying the problem with the right solution to the company, the carry to you. And guess what? You miss one of those things. You're not getting the sale. So I could go in a house sprint every single time and say, it was me that time. I just didn't even connect with them. That was not it. You know what I mean? And then, I, or, or it could be a scenario where maybe I didn't build enough value in the insurance company. Or maybe I just didn't identify the problem and I gave the wrong solution or I explained the solution. Maybe it was a client that had a $300,000 mortgage that I could only do Eagle Premier for $30,000. And I didn't explain that solution well enough and build it in and, and compare things like, for what do you mean? It's $200 for $30,000. That's ridiculous. If you look at your credit card bills that are $10,000, you spend way more than, than $200 a month. So how is this not a great value for you? Because it's tax-free. It eliminates the burden right off the, off the bat. And if I put 30 grand in your bank account right now, you'd be jumping for joy. Why don't we give your spouse the same feeling when, she, when you, know, you die? So we don't, we don't ask good questions in that manner and build the right scenario uh, most of the time. And that's why we don't capture those sales. And then obviously, I think the number one 
um, problem with most people's sales is we don't drive emotion and people don't know when and where to drive the emotion. I actually did a recent video on our uh, Northwest YouTube page that just talks about the areas to drive the emotion, like through income replacement, through current life insurance, through health issues. If you, if you guys want to dig deeper on that, you can check it out. But those are those are areas where if you don't know what you don't know, it's just a dangerous place to live. And I think it's an area where this is a thinking person's game. If you are able to change quickly, which is that last number five, if we're able to change some things, then you're able to implement them. If things are not working for you, it means you need to change. If things are working great for you, you don't necessarily need to change those things. I promise we need to change certain aspects of what we do, but we don't need to change everything. So it's, it's more about, you know, we all are, we all are going to fall down in business. It's more about how quickly we get back up and adapt and make those, make those changes too. So those are some of the things that, you know, I think about in, in this business, Brent, if you want to maybe ask me a few questions about things, that'd be great. Yeah, dude. And, and I'm taking notes as you're talking here and, and, and I almost don't want to say nothing else because I don't want to screw it up. I mean, I'm sitting here the whole time. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm like, this, this is why you're unequivocally the best trainer in this industry, in my opinion. I mean, it, it, and I hope everybody else was taking notes. I hope they go back and rewatch this. Um, but let me ask you this, because, and, and again, I took a ton of notes, but one of the things I wrote down with the star next to it was, it seems like one of the big things you're talking to people about is, is enjoying the process, right? Yeah. It, it, because, and with my athletic background, I know you have an athletic background and, and, and a lot of times what I like to do, Matt, is I like to listen to some of the people at the top of their game, you know, whether it's basketball, you know, LeBron James or Tom Brady in football or whoever it might be, but some of the people that are at the top. And if I, if you listen to them give interviews and talk about what's going through their head, so many times you hear it's all about the process, the daily routines of getting better, enjoy the process, uh, and the results ultimately come, you know, because you're prepared now when game time happens, right? Um, talk a little bit about that, just enjoying that process. And, and ha have you always done that? Or is that something that's, um, you know, grows every day or you get better at every day? Because I know that's something that a lot of agents struggle with. And I did when I was brand new. It was like I was wanting to get rich day one. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So the, the crazy thing about this is, at least for me, I think I found out the, the secret to life. And here it is, Brent. So progress equals happiness. And so many people want to get to that goal destination, whatever their goal is. But when they, when they finally arrive at a certain destination, what they start to recognize is the true happiness was in the daily routines and the habits and you competing against yourself and others in a healthy way to get to the place that you want to be. Because the truth about life is it's just an endless list of things and progress throughout the way. But when we're running at full capacity, when we're really running at full, full capacity, when you think about your happiest times in life, and this could be personal or business, progress in your personal relationships, extremely ha extreme happiness, progress in business, extreme happiness. You take away progress on any level and you start to suffer a little bit more and feel that scenario. And progress is going to look different for all of us. Progress doesn't mean that you get a win all the time. You have to learn from a lot of your failures and have that ability to change to get to a new level and identify the new person that you need to be and the new behaviors that you have to have and the new standards you have to set to get to the next level of person that you want to be. And we hear all the cliches of, hey, you need to just get 1% better every day and all those certain things. And I know for a fact that I haven't got 1% better every day, um, but I, I certainly um, try to operate in a manner of at least being self-aware enough to know that I have to improve. And we have to redefine ourselves. And the way that we can redefine ourselves are, number one, we can find a, the right circle to be in. You know, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. There's probably someone 
in your circle right now that is like crabs in a bucket. They're pulling you back down and they want, want you to probably not, they want you to do well, just not better than them. And if that's one of the people in your circle, it's time to find someone else in your circle. And generally speaking, you want to bring someone into your circle that is way above where you're at. So it creates a draft for you to get to. So too many people get comfortable with the same people in their life that aren't where they really want to be. And they wonder why they stay where they're at. So one of the things that you can do to help yourself is identify circles for you to get into, try to figure out ways to continually stay uncomfortable and ways to stay uncomfortable. So many different, you know, self-improvement type scenarios, whether it could be your nutrition, it could be your, you know, exercise, it could be simply relationships that you start to build with. But when you think about those areas, those are all progress areas too, which creates a lot of happiness. Progress is happiness. It's the secret to life. I'm telling you. <laughs> but, but, I love that. Man. I love it, man. Now, now we've got the rest of everything in our life figured out, right? Yeah, just- exactly. You, I mean, <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't know anybody. It's hundred percent true. I don't know anybody that's mad that's making progress in their life. Like I am super unhappy. All my relationships are making wonderful progress. All my business is flourishing. Everything's going great. Um, you know, but I'm mad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not that's generally not not the way it works. But it's 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 never going to be smooth sailing. You're going to get hit in the face. You're going to get you know punched in the mouth. And it, it's more about just understanding that that's part of life and part of what you need to get through because sales is a difficult thing. You, you have the roller coaster ride of being extremely high and then extremely low. I mean, there's been 187,000 times I think I've wanted to quit this business um, for different reasons, right? Like you literally one day I'm like, I am going to retire. I have made all these sales. I am the best ever. And then the next day it's like, you get charged back to no shows. You're like, I am quitting. That's it. I am done. I'm quitting. It's, you know, but the truth of the matter is it's living in the middle, right? If you live in the middle, uh, you don't have those high emotions, but let's be honest. We're emotional creatures, human beings. That's how we work. And uh, it's just your, your job to identify those things and understand simple things like, hey, the human brain is three times more negative than positive. So the more that we understand how we work as humans, the more that we can operate in a different manner when we have negative things happen. Because I could give you 100 compliments, Brent, and then I give you, you know, one comment that's negative and you're going to be like, I don't care about the 100 compliments. You just told me that I'm not very good at this or something. So right. it, it's crazy. And we hold on to things like that. So it's, uh, well, well, dude, before I let you run, cause I, I mean, I, I know you're taking time away from, from your day and uh, things you need to get done and I'm super appreciative, but as, as we kind of wrap up and, and I do my best not to give the uphill in the snow barefooted, version right. of, of of what we've been through right and and where where ffl has come in eight years basically and um but we have such a vehicle now that is so we it has gained so much steam and and so much momentum from where it was at one time and um just talk real quick maybe about the things you're most excited about about where we are as a company about the opportunity um, that type of stuff, what you're excited about. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, number one is, you know, when we first started, Brent, the biggest difficulty for all of us was getting new leads in agents' hands. That's part of the reason why we didn't recruit like we needed to, because we just couldn't create the opportunities for individuals. Well, now with our lead platform that we continually improve, we can get fresh leads in, in agents' hands, which really allows a massive growth scenario. So it's from the basic core of fundamentals of how we can help and save other people, whether we're saving them from a low compensation environment with other captive agents or companies out there that want to, you know, struggle with contracts and all these different things that are in this space, or whether we're just being the best, absolute best sales trainers that we can be on a free platform that doesn't charge agents to really allow them to get to the new level. I know for a fact, I get it quite a bit. In fact, a lot of people in this industry that aren't with Family First Life utilize our training. It's because we have the best training. And a lot of times you hear people try to duplicate or replicate our training because we're we're the best in the business. And uh, the numbers speak for themselves, right? So it's just important to really understand 
what we what you got your hands on. You own this business. You have the opportunity to create a high income for yourself as long as you put a massive amount of work and dedication behind it for you and your family. Those are the areas that just the simple things that you need to take advantage of in this business because it, it's, you know, I've done a lot of different self-employed businesses by far for me, this has been the best one hands down. So yeah. I, you, it's great to be able to get paid what you're worth. You get the skill set and the work ethic behind, you know, what the, the platform that we have here and the money follows. And that's a beautiful thing. I love it, dude. As I said, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of agents watching this thing back because there, there was so much. You covered so much. And that's, in a nutshell, why I wanted to have you on today because um, you never disappoint. Um, and, and you always bring so much knowledge, so much passion, um, you know, about the industry um, and sales in general and just the people business. We're in a people business and, and you understand how to explain it well and communicate it well. And, um, dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time out of your day. You're busy. I will day. say this, Brent. I will say this. There's only one thing that I'm upset about right now. Uh, I have a feeling I know what it is, but, but so I'm, gonna ask I'm just mad that I'm not wearing your gold medal right now during this. <laughs> hey, I knew it too. When, when, when we started this, I mean, it would look so good. The shiny black, you know, <laughs> when we there. started this call, I was thinking to myself, I was like, Matt's going to make some sort of comment about why is that gold medal not, not inside that Jersey back over my shoulder, you know? And, and I, I, I told you, you should have been wearing it to every appointment all the time. And I think I told you that I did wear it on one day's worth of appointments. And that day I absolutely crushed it. I know exactly. I, it. I, I, I remember I dared you to. That it was good stuff. Yeah, Sent you a picture. But hey, dude, I really do. I appreciate you. I love being in business with you. And uh, anything I can ever do to help the uh, the Northwest team, you know, I'm here for you. And uh, bro, I look forward to continuing to grow this thing with you. Amen. Thank you, Brent. Appreciate right, it. Appreciate yeah. you. All right.